Hi all. In the previous video, we learned about structures that are common to all cells. Here's a quick quiz. What is the structure of the cell membrane and what is its function? If you said that cell membranes are made of phospholipids and proteins and that their function is selective permeability, good on you. Here's another question. Which structure is the site of protein synthesis? This time the answer is ribosomes. Those four structures, cell membrane, cytoplasm, ribosomes, and at least one chromosome. They're common to all cells. The most numerous cells in the world are prokaryotic. What does it mean for a cell to be prokaryotic? Prokaryotic cells are cells that lack a nuclear membrane. Prokaryotic cells tend to be small, 0.1 to 5 microns. Prokaryotic organisms also tend to be unicellular. That means that each cell is a whole individual that has the potential to grow and survive and reproduce all on its own. This is in contrast to multicellular organisms, which are made up of more than one cell. Humans, for example, are multicellular, being made of tens of trillions of cells. The prokaryotic organisms are the bacteria and the archaea. We'll focus on bacteria for this discussion. The structures that are not in red boxes are structures that are structures found in many, though not all, types of bacteria. We'll go through each of them briefly. The first structure is the cell wall. It's not just bacteria that have cell walls. Almost all types of cells, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya have cell walls. In fact, the only large group of organisms whose cells do not have cell walls are the animals. All the other eukaryotic groups have cell walls. The cell walls of bacteria are structurally unique because they're made of the chemical called peptidoglycan, which hasn't been found in non-bacterial organisms. And since human cells lack cell walls, we're animals, the bacterial cell wall represents a target that we can attack when we want to kill bacteria without harming ourselves. The first antibiotic ever discovered, penicillin, attacks the peptidoglycan formation in bacterial cell wall development. The main function of any cell wall is to provide outer structure and rigidity. It isn't typically involved in a lot of selective permeability. That is the function of the cell membrane, which is a very different structure than the cell wall. The bacterial capsule is a sticky, carbohydrate-rich ooze that's secreted from some bacterial cells. Picture a hard candy, like a Jolly Rancher. When you suck on it, the outside surface becomes sticky. That's like the bacterial capsule. The capsule might be a fairly solid structure, or it might be a more disorganized ooze. In either case, the capsule serves several purposes. In some bacteria, the capsule can act as a sunscreen, helping to minimize ultraviolet light absorption. In other cases, the capsule helps bacteria escaping phagocytosis, being eaten by larger cells. Capsules also help bacteria to stick to other surfaces. That stickiness is important. When a capsule-forming bacterium sticks to a solid surface, other bacteria can stick to it. As more and more microorganisms stick together, a diverse community of organisms develops, all layered on top of one another. This community is called a biofilm. Biofilms form on most any solid surface that's constantly bathed in water. Think of some of those circumstances. The inside of a fish tank, the bottom of a bird bath, your teeth. Can you, can you describe biofilm forming in those conditions? We're beginning to recognize that biofilms are important in more and more human health disorders. They're some of the main causes of the, uh, for the failure of heart valves after valve replacement surgery. They also seem to be important in the development of antibiotic resistance because outer layers of microorganisms can shield harmful bacteria in the inner layers of the biofilm from the antibiotic effects. Cell walls and capsules two bacterial structures uh, that are important. In the next video, we'll talk about the three remaining structures on this slide, pili, 
flagella, and endospores.